Assalamu alaikum. Our subject today is hydrocephalus, which is an excessive accumulation of CSF fluid resulting in abnormal widening of the spaces in the brain. And this widening creates potentially harmful pressure on the tissues of the brain, maybe due to either overproduction of CSF, underabsorption of CSF, or obstruction of CSF from the ventricles. The ventricles consist of two lateral ventricles and a midline third and fourth ventricle. And the fourth ventricle continue as a central canal of the spinal cord. The CSF is produced by the choroid plexus, which is located in a specific location in the body and temporal horn of lateral ventricles and in the roof of the third and fourth ventricle. From the lateral ventricles, the CSF drains to the third ventricle uh, by through the foramen of Monroe and then by the aqueduct of Silvius to the fourth ventricle. And from the ve fourth ventricle, th there is three foramen, uh, two lateral Lushka foramen and one medial Magindi foramen to drain to the spinal cord or to the subarachnoid space to be reabsorbed into the venous sinus. Clinical presentation of the hydrocephalus children below two years, an enlarging and disproportionate head circumference, frontal bossing, calvarial thinning, tense, bulging anterior fontanel, sutural diastasis, enlarged skull veins, sunsetting eyes, lateral rectus pulses, and leg spasticity. And commonest causes at this age congenital causes and post hemorrhagic and infective hydrocephalus. While in older children or adults develop early morning headache, nausea, vomiting, papilledema, leg spasticity, cranial neck pulses, and altered conscious level. Commonest causes at this age, posterior fossa, neoplasm, and aqueductal stenosis. Uh, radiological features of hydrocephalus. On conventional radiograph, it is based on the finding of increased intracranial pressure like widened sutures, increased craniofacial ratio, bulging fontanelles, erosion of dorsum cilli, and silver beating appearance in the chronic cases. In ultrasound, there is the dilatation of posterior horn of lateral ventricle, and the posterior horn is the first portion of the lateral ventricle to dilate, and compression and thinning of choroid plexus that's called hanging or dangling choroid plexus sign. Size of the lateral ventricle, uh, less than 1 cm, which is normal, 1 to 1.5 cm, borderline ventriculomegaly, more than 1.2 to 1.5 cm, mild ventriculomegaly, and more than 1.5 cm, marked ventriculomegaly. This is, uh, uh, in the measurement of the lateral ventricle from the medial wall to the lateral wall, and this thin choroid plexus. In the transcranial infant ultrasound, there's a Mickey Mouse sign, dilatation of lateral and obvious dilatation of third ventricle. False positive diagnosis, uh, incorrect measurement of the echogenic line of the insula as the lateral wall of the ventricle. Radiological features of hydrocephalus on CT and MRI, the size of both temporal horn is greater than two millimeter, clearly visible. In the absence of hydrocephalus, the temporal horn should be barely visible. And the ratio of the largest width of a frontal horns to maximum biparietal diameter, that's called advanced ratio, is greater than 30% in hydrocephalus. And there is a transependymal exudate is translated on the images as periventricular hypoattenuation on CT or hyperintensity on MRI T2 and flare sequences. Ballooning of a frontal horns of lateral ventricles and third ventricle, which is called Mickey Mouse ventricles may indicate equiductal obstruction and upward bowing of corpus callosum on sagittal MRI suggest acute hydrocephalus. This is the, the axial section uh, that represents the Evans ratio and this is transependymal edema. Types of hydrocephalus, as such, more, a more precise terminology is to divide hydrocephalus into either communicating and non communicating, addressing where the obstruction is located, obstructive and non obstructive on the grounds of whether or not there is obstruction of CSF pathways in the ventricles or in the subarachnoid space.
But the hydrocephalus is divided into communicating and non-communicating. Non-communicating, which is earlier called obstructive. There is obstruction to the CSF flow within the ventricular system. An obstruction from the foramen at level of foramen of Monroe or aqueduct of Silvius or for ventricular outlet. While communicating, which is earlier called non-obstructive, divided into uh, communicating without obstruction of CSF absorption, there is normal pressure hydrocephalus or overproduction of CSF, or with obstruction of CSF absorption in case of subarachnoid hemorrhage, meningitis, and leptomeningeal carcinomatosis. So uh, regarding with the non-communicating or obstructive, there is obstruction anywhere from the level of foramina of Monroe to outlet foramina of fourth ventricle. Could be either congenital in aqueductal stenosis, developmental or acquired secondary to infection or hemorrhage, chaotic to and dandiwalker malformation or congenital midline tumors. Foramina lesions, either unilateral or bilateral. In unilateral, there is a dilatation of the one, uh, one lateral ventricle. It is either because of kink of foramen due to midline shift or small lesion obstructing one foramen, such as in tuberous sclerosis, colloysis. While bilateral, there is a dilatation of the both lateral ventricles, and the causes could be supracellular meningioma, glioma, craniopharyngioma, or colloysis. In this axial section, CT that show choroid cyst obstructing both foramina of mono. Axial contrast CT brain scan showing the typical calcified subepidermal nodules and an enhancing intraventricular giant cell astro astrocytoma at the foramen of Monroe. Regarding the aqueduct stenosis, 20% of hydrocephalus in children could be either congenital x link recessive disease, inflammatory encephalitis, MS, cysticerosis, or neoplastic, most common in adult brainstem glioma, pineal body tumor. Uh, and this axial section shows there is a dilatation of lateral and third ventricle, while the fourth ventricle is normal. And aqueductal stenosis is present early in childhood, but can be seen at any age. Gliosis of aqueduct, web, septum, or diaphragm as the causes, and sagittal MRI is helpful for diagnosis. There is an enlargement of the third ventricle, massive ventriculomegaly, and ventricular wall is rounded and stretched. In MRI, the feature the same as that in the CT, dilatation of lateral and third ventricle is balloon because the obstruction is near to it. Brainstem glioma enhancing uh, glioblastoma multiform can obstruct the aqueduct and compress the fourth ventricle, so called supratentorial hydrocephalus. In late onset, aqueductal stenosis may be due to tactile glioma, which is a low grade astrocytoma with good prognosis present in children and adolescents associated with neurofibromatosis type 1. So, an adult patient uh, presented with headache. On CT, there is a feature of like aqueductal stenosis, dilatation of lateral and third ventricle, while the fourth ventricle is normal. And because of it is late onset, MRI should, should be done for the patient because the possibility of tactile glioma, which is easily missed on oh. CT and is not obvious seen in the uh, uh, T1 or and not enhancing, but is appear more obvious on the flare and T2 weighted image. So oh. the features of tactile gliomas on CT, homogeneous expansion of tactile plate, isodense lesion with a minimal enhancement, not uncommon to find central tactile calcification. On MRI, T1 ISO2 slightly hypo intense to gray matter, and T2 hyper intense to gray matter. There is no enhancement. With the time, the mass may develop small cystic spaces or calcification, and higher tumor tend to be larger and tend to enhance more vividly. Fourth ventricle uh, causes either congenital atresia of the outlet foramina, inflammatory, or neoplastic. Uh, in the children, more common medulloplastoma, astrocytoma, and brainstem glioma, and in adult ependymoma, metastasis, and hemangioma, or in the cerebellopontine angle lesions such as meningioma or acoustic, acoustic neuroma. But in a case of atresia of outlet foramina, there is a dilatation of lateral, third, 
and also the fourth ventricle, which is ballooned because the obstruction is near to it. Uh, and then compared with the aqueductal stenosis, with the atresia of outlet foramina, in the aqueductal stenosis, the fourth ventricle is normal, while in the atresia of outlet foramina, it is markedly dilated. The posterior fossa tumor, if it is in the ventricle like ependymoma, or posterior to it like medulloblastoma, or on the side of the fourth ventricle like astrocytoma, all this tumor will cause compression of the fourth ventricle and uh, develop the supratentorial hydrocephalus. Propped fourth ventricle, occlusion of the outlet foramina as well as the aqueduct. And uh, this the, the patient developed with the aqueductal stenosis and treated with the shunt and the shunt will obstruct it and cause obstruction of the outlet foramina. Because of the fourth ventricle contain choroid plexus, thus, so the CSF production uh, cause a progressive dilatation. And this is the only scenario to develop trapped fourth ventricle. And the patient develops sign of symptoms of posterior fossa, space occupying lesions such as atresia and diplopia. This is markedly dilated fourth ventricle in the presence of shunt. And uh, this is dilate, dilate, markedly dilated fourth ventricle, decompress other uh, ventricles and oozing of CSF around it. And this condition diagnosis only in the presence of uh, shunt. Uh, communicating or obstructive hydrocephalus. This represents an extraventricular obstructive hydrocephalus and causes could be meningitis, subarachnoid hemorrhage, meningeal carcinomatosis, and dural sinus thrombosis. The obstruction beyond the fourth ventricle, either in the basal cistern or arachnoid, arachnoid villi. In subarachnoid hemorrhage, there is a destruction of the involved villi and this cause defect in the absorption of the CSF and result in the supratentorial and infratentorial hydrocephalus. Also there is enhancement of meninges and the presence of hydrocephalus in the patient uh, of meningitis. Normal pressure hydrocephalus, communicating hydrocephalus with incomplete obstruction to CSF drainage. And uh, the patient has remote history of infection or hemorrhage in the present in 50% of cases or cause trauma and uh, surgery. Uh, the patient came with a gait ataxia, dementia, and urinary incontinence. There is a normal pressure hydrocephalus in large ventricles with the normal sulci. Uh, in the other causes of hydrocephalus, there is a large ventricle with the obliterated sulci, and this differentiates from the normal. In addition to the periventricular edema, which is more in the other form of the hydrocephalus, but in the normal may be seen, rarely seen. An increased flow void in the aqueduct and upward bowing of the corpus callosum. Positive response to shunting when patient had uh, abnormal gait, upward bowing of corpus callosum, balloon third ventricle, non-history of hemorrhage or infection, and if there is no cere uh, cerebral atrophy or ischemia. In non-obstructive hydrocephalus, there is a CSF overprotection. A CSF normally is produced by choroid plexus in the range of 500 milliliter per day and absorbed by arachnoid villi, which is a parasagittal structure on both sides, drains CSF into the superior sagittal sinus. In this case, in choroid plexus papilloma, there is increased production of the CSF that reached to the range of the 2.5 liter per day. And this is the only cause of the non-obstructive hydrocephalus. About the special types of hydrocephalus, there is a holoprosencephaly, hydronencephaly, colposcephaly, dandy walker, and KRE2 malformation. In holoprosencephaly, there is three types, a lobar, semilobar, and lobar. In all of these types, there is incomplete subtation of a primitive forebrain to cerebral hemispheres and abnormal communication of gray and white matter across the midline. 
In allober tide, there is a failure to form separate hemispheres. Ventral and medial portion of a brain never develop. Single and looped brain tissue, single monoventricle, and diffuse thalami with reduced size. So there is no fox, no corpus callosum, no interhemispheric fissure, no third ventricle, and no side deviant fissures. In timilober holoprotein cephaly, and also called H-shaped ventricles, there is absence of temple lucidum, rudimentary fox, uh, incomplete interhemispheric fissure, and basal ganglia fused. In lubar holoprotein cephaly, almost complete brain cleavage and well lobulated ventricles, but it is present in there is two signs in coronal section that called box like frontal horns, and in axial section, incomplete septum pellucidum. Hydronencephaly, absence of majority of the cerebral tissue, but to preserve thalami and normal cerebellum, but and fox is the present. Differential diagnosis severe hydrocephalus, where a thin rim of a brain tissue will be seen around the ventricles. In corpocephaly, that means there is disproportionate prominence of the occipital horns of lateral ventricle. That is merely a marker of disorder brain formation. A diagnosis become more likely when the ratio of posterior horn to anterior horn uh, is more than or equal to three po power of two. It is commonly described as hydrocephalus, but distinction is very important because hydrocephalus is a progressive obstetrictive and need shunting, while in cold cephaly it is not uh, obstetrictive, not progressive, and not require surgical treatment. Colposophily can occur as either, either isolated or in associated with other neurological syndrome, such as a genesis of corpus callosum, KRE malformation, and lysencephaly. And this, the posterior to anterior ratio is helps to distinguish colposophily from normal pressure hydrocephalus, which is important differential diagnosis. Regarding the retrocerebellar cystic lesions, such as in Dandy Walker malformation, there is a cystic continuation with the fourth ventricle that uh, the presence of hydrocephalus is variable. While in media cystina magna, which is a normal variant, there is uh, no hydrocephalus. But in arachnoises, there is a compression of cerebellum with the fourth ventricle that cause supratentorial hydrocephalus. About KRE2 malformation, which is 40% uh, uh, of all hydrocephalus in children. And there is a small size posterior fossa, 100% malomangial seal downward displacement of the medulla and vermis, and there is supratentorial hydrocephalus. Uh, hydrocephalus versus atrophy uh, features that favor hydrocephalus include an enlargement of the anterior and posterior recesses of the third ventricle, downward convexity of the floor of the third ventricle, and dilated temporal horns. Also, in hydrocephalus, there is a narrowing of the ventricular angle. Uh, effacement of the uh, cortical sulci, while in atrophy there is a di uh, di dilated sulci, uh, and periventricular edema more common in the, in the hydrocephalus. The, so this axial section shows there is normal brain, normal ventricle, uh, brain atrophy with a dilated ventricle, dilated sulci, and hydrocephalus with a dilated ventricle and obliterated sulci. Uh, regarding the treatment of hydrocephaly, uh, either by external ventricular drainage, ventriculoperitoneal or ventriculoatrial shunt, or third ventriculostomy. If hydrocephalus left untreated can cause developmental delays, personality changes, and memory loss. In severe case, untreated hydrocephalus may result in nerve damage, vision loss, and even death. About shunt complication, a malfunction, shunt infection, subdural hematoma, and the slit ventricle syndrome. Uh, the shunt malfunction, which is most common complication, is a partial or complete blockage of the shunt that causes it to function intermittently or not at all. CSF accumulates and can result in symptoms of any treated hydrocephalus. A shunt blockage from blood cells, tissue, bacteria, 
or and can occur in any part of the shunt. This uh, CT's axial section shows a uh, uh, functioning shunt with the normal ventricle, while this axial section CT show a non-functioning shunt with a dilated ventricle transventricular edema. Uh, other shunt complication with this shunt infection that one to 5% either shortly or after months or years causes include systemic infection, peritonitis, trauma, and surgery, and that cause ventriculitis or even converted to abscess with the enhanced margin. Abdural hematoma usually in, appear in the children over three years after shunting of markedly enlarged ventricles, but use of high pressure valve can decrease the incidence of these hematomas. Uh, this show the bilateral hematoma and the sudden decompression of the ventricles. Slit ventricle syndrome, normal or small ventricle with the sign of shunt failure, chronic over drainage causes a ventricular collapse and ventricular wall fibrosis with a continuous CS of a production, inability of the ventricle to expand because it is fibrous and shunt malfunction will lead to severe symptoms of shunt failure in spite of the small ventricles. The CT brain with the ventricular peritoneal shunt in situ and the slight ventricle with an underlying shunt malformation. Thank you.